The time has come yet again to lay down the hammer, as some may say, including a tiny pink gremlin carrying a Mega Mallet. My name is Mike, and I am back with another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle against my opponent, Hatless, who I found in a Discord server. Now, he has some pretty big threats, Roaring Moon, Iron Moth included, and uh, I'm really working with a team I haven't used before. I don't really like intro, so I'm just going to say this. I'm going to lead off with my Tinkaton. I have a feeling he'll lead with Meowskarada or Frostlass. Meowskarada is a great pivoter in this meta, and Frostlass can set up spikes and also take down its attacker with Destiny Bond. And as predicted, he does lead with the Frostlass as I lead with my Tink. I could start setting up my sword stance here, however with the Iron Moth cooking in the back, I don't really feel comfortable doing so because all he has to do is just switch and pivot on out, I don't feel like taking a Fiery Dance to the face. So I'm thinking if he decides to switch, I'm going to go for the knockoff, we'll see what we can do. And he does, he goes right out to the Tusk, and this is a great Mon to hit the knockoff with, whether it's Leftovers, Choice Band, Choice Scarf, uh, Assault Vest, Heavy Duty Boots, I've seen it all. So. Thankfully, I do knock off the leftovers here, and now I can get my pivot out into my Goldengo, which is a risk. He could go for knockoff here, but I am predicting that he kind of just goes right for a headlong rush or an earthquake. Just gotta play it safe. He could even stealth rock here, so I think Goldengo really is the good move. Uh, but he does go for the knockoff, which is unfortunate. Uh, no more air balloon, so that does suck. I now am very vulnerable to Great Tusk. This set on Goldengo, he's not really super fast, uh, so. It's kind of a risk that I stay in, however, I can just go for Make It Rain as fodder in case he does stay in. He could also switch, uh, but right now, at this point, Goldengo really is not super useful in this match. He gets outsped by everything, and his health is just so low that at this point, he really is just sackable. So sorry to my string cheese boy, but he will not be making waves in this battle, but we will be making it rain on the Slow King, which I really should have seen coming. It was kind of the obvious play. I think I was just so dead set on getting Tusk chipped down or even KO'd. Uh, Shadow Ball would have even been a good move to get some really good chip, uh, and even get some really good chip on the Slow King too to be safe. I could have gone to Corviknight honestly, but the best thing that I could have done there was U-Turn, and I just don't want to be playing games with the Slow King because it is pretty tanky. Now, like I said, Goldengo really isn't offering much in this battle. I'm just going to continue to go for Shadow Ball. He does have Regenerator, so the more I chip him down, the less he can recover upon switching. And he does go for Future Sight here, which is great. I take no damage, and I can get another turn of chipping him down. So this is this is great, honestly. Uh, Goldengo not really doing a whole lot, but still finding its way to make some damage, because chip damage is always important, you know? We Shadow Ball again, and we take him to about a quarter of a health left, which is honestly a huge win for me. He is going to go for the Chili Reception and switch out here, uh, so he will get about a third of that health back. But like I said, any damage is good damage, I will take it. And while that is a positive, I kind of have created a little bit of a, a grave for myself. This Goldengo is kind of useless now, it's, I'm sitting at minus one special attack, I have low health. He can honestly switch into something like Iron Moth or Roaring Moon, which he does here, and start setting up Dragon Dances, and I don't really want that, so I'm gonna have to switch out here, and I'm gonna allow him to get a turn of Dragon Dancing. So, not really favorable for me. But it is what it is. I, I'd be stupid to stay in and continue to Shadow Ball or make it rain. It's just not worth it. And now I'm just going to send in my Corviknight since I am fully invested in defense. Uh, I do also have the Rocky Helmet for some chip damage. So even after a Dragon Dance, if he decides to go for that here, this Roaring Moon is not going to be able to get much damage off on me and, and this team in general. He does go for the Dragon Dance as predicted, gets the plus one on the attack and the speed. And I have Body Press uh, on top of, of Rocky Helmet, so Roaring Moon just absolutely is going to, to fall at the mercy of Corviknight here. He goes for Taunt, which I'm a little surprised about. Maybe he was predicting an Iron Defense, or, or maybe just Roost, I'm not really sure. But I get the Body Press, does more than half since I am, like I said, fully invested in Defense. Uh, it's going to do a ton of damage. And I'm thinking if he decides to switch, I can just go for U-Turn and get the Pivot. He decides to stay in, Crunch does a ton of damage, and U-Turn is going to take care of the Roaring Moon. I clean up nicely, honestly. Corviknight is a very, very good counter to uh, to Roaring Moon there. Body Press, U-Turn, you name it. Body Press really good for Terra Steel. Uh, I'm thinking I could go into Goldango here, but I feared if he switched into Iron Moth that he could start setting up with Fiery Dance, and I really don't want to do that. Tinglu is also a thought for the next Pokemon to switch into but I really want him at full health just because uh, he's a tank and I I'm gonna need Ting Lu for his uh, other threats as well. So I'm thinking, you know what, never let them know your next move. I'm gonna send in my Cinderace, simply because I outspeed everything else that remains on his team. 
And if I feel uncomfortable with anything that he does bring in, I could just honestly pivot with U-Turn. Cinderace honestly is a really good pivotal Pokemon. Uh, I think this it, it, it's really good in the meta. Uh, it does really well in, in OU personally. And he does bring in Iron Moth, which I had a feeling he might do. And this set does carry Zen Headbutt. Now I just have to land it, 80% accuracy, and I do. I get that uh, Psychic Boost in Zen Headbutt, and it's going to one-shot the Iron Moth since its defenses are absolute garbage. Well, its physical defense is garbage. Its special defense isn't that, that bad. Uh, but I don't think he saw that coming because most Cinderaces don't really carry Zen Headbutt. Sometimes they do. They're running Gunk Shot now, and they can run Sucker Punch but I don't carry either, which, you know, kind of give and take. He's going to bring in Meowskarada now, and I do fear that because uh, even without Scarf, this thing naturally outspeeds me, so I have to be careful about a knockoff. And I'm thinking, what's the best thing to bring in here? I could bring in Corviknight to get the chip damage just in case this thing is Focus Sashed. I could sack my Goldengo here. Um, I could bring in Tinglu to resist it, but I would have to sack off my leftovers then. Ultimately, really, the best move is bringing in Goldengo as Death Fodder. I have no use for it, but Cinderace did its job. I'm very, very pleased with that. That Zen Headbutt was just such a good prediction, or um, a, a good, uh, not a prediction, but a good, a good move to have. Um, but he's actually going to go U-turn. He would have KO'd me anyway, whether it was knockoff or U-turn if I left Cinderace in, uh, but there was no way I was doing that because I do need Cinderace in the long run. Uh, as he goes into Frostlass here, we're going to finally pour one out for Goldengo. Uh, <laughs> honestly, probably should have fainted a long time ago, but it's time now for it to actually KO. So Frostlass picking up the KO here, Goldengo goes down, uh, did its job, honestly. You know, I, it took that U-turn very nicely, and, uh, you know, I got some good chip on that Slowking. Now I'm going to go into, I believe Tinkaton really would be a good option here. I'm going to try and let my Tinkaton shine a little bit. Maybe I can start setting up Swords Dance now that I don't have an Iron Moth or a Roaring Moon to deal with. So that might be a pretty cool thing to toy with. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't really foresee him staying in because Tinkaton has some pretty good special defense, honestly. So let's just go for Swords Dance and see what we can do. If he brings in Tusk, which I'm pretty sure he's going to do now. Yep, there it is. Uh, I can just go for Play Rough and just get a ton of damage off because Tinkaton is... Uh, Pretty good. I don't have full investment in uh, attack. Now, I know this thing only has 75 base attack. Uh, I'm kind of relying on Sword Stance to carry it, but I the spread, I think, is more so... It's, it's a little bit defensive, a little bit speedy. Uh, there's not a lot of attack investment on this Tinkaton. But regardless, even if I do go for Play Ref, it's not going to do a ton if this thing is defensive. Like, yeah, it does about half, which is pretty good, because another one is going to uh, just easily KO it. He goes for Body Press, does a ton of damage. A ton of damage, wow. Honestly, that reveals that he is fully invested in defense, uh, which is good for him, because that set is uh, a little tough to deal with. But nonetheless, we will go for another Play Rough, because it should be able to KO from half court. Uh, that's the goal. However... <laughs> He is going to whip out the Terra right here, which the second I see this, I'm like, wow, okay, it's going to be Terra Steel because that is commonly used on Great Tusk, mainly to counter Moon Blast from Iron Valiant or Play Rough from Azumarill. So I know Play Rough is not going to do anything to this thing, and I'm going to get knocked out. So I go for the Play Rough, it hits, and like I said, does absolutely nothing. He's going to body press to finish me off, and that is... That is it for Tinkaton, that's it. I wish I really could have done more. I really like Tinkaton, it's just, it's base stats, uh, it's base attack really, it's just so lackluster, unfortunately. Um, so Sword Stance does carry it, and like I said, this set was kind of more dispersed where its attack really doesn't shine, unless you're really using Sword Stance. But, either way, back to the battle, we are going to bring in Cinderace now to clean up. I go for Pyro Ball, and I miss, which sucks. Uh, because now it's kind of looking like he can easily recover here. He does go for knockoff, which was a little surprising. Earthquake or Headlong Rush would have done a lot more, but maybe he thought I was Choice Bandit or something, so I, I kind of get the logic behind it. He's also setting up minus one attack, so kind of have to think about that as well. Uh, we're going to go for another Pyro Ball and hope that it hits, because Pyro Ball does have 90% accuracy, and as you know, 90% accuracy feels like 10% accuracy sometimes. Thankfully though, Pyro Ball does come through, and we get rid of his Terra and his Tusk, which is fantastic. Now we just have to deal with Slow King, Meowskarada, and Frostlass, so not bad, not bad. Cinderace does shine here, but I do worry about Meowskarada. It's always like a 50-50 coin flip, whether it's carrying a uh, Band or Scarf. Now he brings in Frostlass here, I'm like, alright, well, he can't Terra, and he is very vulnerable to like, Pyro Ball, he's, he's weak to it, so... Uh, 
just gonna full on send it and go for it. He actually reveals that he is Scarf Frostlass, goes for the Shadow Ball, and it does a ton of damage, but I am going to land the Pyro Ball, and Frostlass goes down. So, Cinderace honestly doing a really good job. Um, I did not expect that to be Scarfed whatsoever. I thought that would definitely be Sashed, uh, but I guess running it in OU kind of makes sense because everything is so damn fast this generation and kind of want to watch out for things like Dragapult. And now he's going to bring in Meowskarata, which is kind of my biggest enemy at this point. Like I said, it is definitely a coin flip of whether this thing is banded or scarfed, and I feel like that can really determine the match. So I leave Cinderace in just to see what he's going to lock himself into, and it's going to be knockoff. So now he is a dark type uh, because of its ability, and I can safely go into Tinglu here. I don't want to go into Dragapult just yet. I do still have my Terra, which is nice, but I also still want to scout a little bit more just to see what I'm working with. And now I'm thinking I could just go for Earthquake since both of his Pokemon remaining. Um, it does neutral damage. So he's going to switch kind of as predicted and he's going to go into Slowking. Kind of interested to see how much damage this does because Slowking is more specially defensive, but Tinglu also isn't the most uh, offensive Pokemon either. So it does a good amount of damage. One more Earthquake should knock it out. So I'm just going to go for Earthquake again. I'm kind of expecting him to go back into Meow Scarada so he can get Regenerator Recovery on Slowking, but he actually sacks this thing off, which is nice because now it's just down to the wire between his Meow Scarada and my three remaining Pokemon. Now Tinglu is sitting very pretty at full health, so I am definitely going to get some good damage on him. Uh, it's just a matter of what he decides to lock himself into, which is the scary thing, because he does have U-Turn, Flower Trick, Knock Off, and most likely Play Rough, that's the common set. And he's going to lock himself into Play Rough, and it does a ton of damage. It's a two-hit KO for sure. I do thankfully land the Ruination, which is such a relief because honestly, like I said, 90% does feel like it's 10 or 20% accuracy. Uh, so now he's sitting at half health. One more Play Rough is going to be the death of me, and Tinglu goes down. Very unfortunate there, but it's looking like he is choice banded because that does a ton of damage. I want to go into Corby here, honestly, just to see if Play Rough even knocks me out, because uh, I am fully invested in defense. So I'm going to go for Roost here. I don't really expect to live a Play Rough, but I do, which is freaking wild. Corviknight is honestly such a staple Pokemon. I, I hate running it because it kind of does feel a little, a little cheesy. Uh, it's overrated, on, in my opinion, but it's so good. You, you can't deny it. So I could just keep Roosting and let him just die off to Rocky Helmet damage, but because I'm fairly certain that he is uh, Choice Band. I'm just going to U-turn here and kill him off a Dragapult. I didn't really want to be mean and just keep roosting, because uh, I am like 95% certain this thing is banded and not scarfed. And even if I do mess up there, that's on me, and I can just bring in Corviknight and he just will die to Rocky Helmet. So I'm going to finally use my Terra. I haven't used it all game. The only reason I'm doing it now, yeah, it's kind of a little mean maybe, a little overkill, but also at the same time, in case he is scarfed, I would just want to be able to take neutral damage from the play rough. Naturally though, I think it would probably it would still kill me, probably, judging just how Meowskarada's attacks attack stats are, and it would be stab. But uh, I was right, he is banded and not scarf. So I do go for the Terra Blast there, and that is going to be it for Meowskarada, and that's the game. So Hatless, great battle. I liked your team a lot. Um, and I liked using this team a lot too, so uh, thanks guys so much for watching, I appreciate it. If you like this uh, video, definitely leave a like and subscribe to my channel, considering subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. So I will see you all on the next one.